India Today, of course, is the only channel to be anchoring from ground zero here at the Bharat Mandapam. Uh, India Today is the only channel that has a studio here at the Bharat Mandapam. The only Indian channel to have a studio here at the Bharat Mandapam to bring you a 360 degree perspective of India's G20 presidency and delight, delighted to do so. There's breaking news coming in, news just coming in. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi has just tweeted. The Prime Minister has said India is delighted to host the 18th G20 summit on the 9th and 10th of September 2023 at New Delhi's iconic Bharat Mandapam. The Prime Minister also then went on to say that uh, he's looking forward to his interactions. Uh, this is the first ever G20 summit being hosted by India. I look forward to productive discussions that with world leaders over the next two days. It is my firm belief that the New Delhi G20 summit will chart a new path in the human-centric and inclusive development. This has been India's effort. A year before India's G20 presidency, the G20, the G20 secretariat as uh, uh, Harshvatan Shringla, former foreign secretary and the chief coordinator of the G20 said, India's efforts started identifying uh, what would India's KRAs or key result areas be. India's big focus remained as Amitabh Kant, uh, the G20 Sherpa put it, India's presidency was all about inclusive, decisive, action-oriented and ambitious approach. Results that would actually benefit the developing countries, that would benefit the world. Uh, you heard Rishi Sunak a short while, uh, a short while back, uh, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. India's presidency of the G20 actually happened at the right time. It happened at a very crucial time. Uh, this is because India's, uh, India's actually leading the G20 or uh, you're steering the G20 through a very difficult phase. The world is actually emerging not just from COVID-19 but also from the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And I once again want to bring in India today's Polomi Saha for more on the story. Polomi, the world's grappling huge, huge problems post-COVID-19 and the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And that is why the Russia-Ukraine conflict also had to be included in because that's impacting the economic development of the world, whether it's food, fuel or fertilizers, Polomi. Absolutely. Um, in fact, uh, what Amina Kant, uh, India's Sherpa to the G20, had to say about this was that, of course, uh, the G20 as a multilateral platform is about economic, international economic cooperation. But, of course, uh, in Bali, during the last uh, declaration, what we did see is that, in fact, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, focus was on the conflict uh, between Russia and Ukraine and world leaders wanted that to be included in the joint communique that the document which was to emerge after the summit which of course was called the Bali Declaration and that's simply because conflict also has an impact on growth it has an impact on inflation on prices uh, we do know that uh, food inflation has gone up energy prices have gone up as well and keeping that very same perspective in mind there was uh, in fact uh, some amount of uh, stress put on the same um, in uh, India as well when of course uh, you know the New Delhi declaration was being put together by the Sherpas of all the 19 countries and the EU. So they basically have also had very lengthy conversations on the same. Of course, Amitabh Khan said that they're not in a position to reveal the details of uh, the New Delhi declaration because uh, those are negotiations that are still underway is what Vinay Quatra said. So they are, of course, going to take that document that they've put together to the leaders, have them approve it to, the, uh, to their respective leaders, have them approve it. And then, of course, uh, they will put it out in the public uh, domain, which will be, of course, uh, the afternoon of uh, Sunday when we will expect uh, to see a press conference, possibly by external affairs minister S. J. Shankar. But that is going to be, of course, the culmination, and much is being you know, spoken about in terms of uh, uh, that uh, document. Of course, uh, you know, uh, like you pointed out, there have been a lot of strains as far as, uh, uh, you know, this conflict is concerned. And that's uh, in exactly what Rishi Sunak also spoke about before, of course, uh, landing in New Delhi about the Black Sea Grain Initiative, uh, which was an initiative between Russia, Turkey and Ukraine that Russia pulled out of uh, because it felt that Western countries after the conflict were trying uh, to block Russian exports of uh, agricultural uh, produce, which 
which in turn has led to prices of agricultural produce shooting up and Rishi Sunak hopes uh, that G20 countries will be able to put that down and will be able to put Russia on the map uh, concerning it. Again, uh, Amitabh Khan said this is not the forum technically uh, in terms of security related concerns, but the fact is that conflict has its impact on growth and economic development and that's exactly why they have put their heads together on this subject as well in a lengthy process. Absolutely, and we've seen ever since this Russia-Ukraine war started, it's impacted prices across the world. Food prices, fuel prices, fertilizer prices, and will there be an end to this conflict? Again, Rishi Sunak said he hoped that Prime Minister Narendra Modi would be able to use his influence with the Russian President Vladimir Putin um, to bring this conflict to an end. But what would that end be? Because India has consistently said dialogue is the way forward there is no other way forward when it comes to any conflict because this as prime minister narendra modi put it is not an era of war